So next group of diseases, let's talk about the cardiac diseases. So the cardiac diseases are specifically left heart disease. And let's talk about why left heart disease would cause pulmonary hypertension. Well, we talked about the pulmonary arteries. They're carrying like deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Now there's, the lungs have the pulmonary veins that kind of collect here. And they transmit blood to the left atrium. So blood goes here, it goes to the left ventricle, and eventually it will come out through the aorta to the body. Now, where can a problem happen here? Well, let's say you have a disease that's affecting the left side of the heart. You can't return the blood from the lungs to the left side of the heart if there's some sort of you know, pathology going on there. So blood kind of gets backed up here and you know, the, the, the increased flow of blood gets transmitted up these you know, pulmonary veins and causes it back up here, which causes hypertension from the other side. So this one's pretty simple. There's really you know, three, three ways that this left-sided you know, function can get screwed up. And that's if you have, well, let me stand on this side so you guys can see. So this is, this is heart disease. So the big groups here will be left ventricular systolic dysfunction, systolic dysfunction. Uh, so this is where the left heart can't pump blood forward. Uh, so this will be like you know the dilated cardiomyopathy, uh, because eventually, when if you can't pump blood forward, you know the extra blood gets back gets backed up behind. Then you have left diastolic dysfunction. And this is the really, really big one for causing uh, pulmonary hypertension. Uh, since uh, this is an inability of the left ventricle to fill, then you know that really causes a lot of blood to back up because if it can't fill, it means it can't you know take up that extra blood that's flowing towards it. So. One of the big examples of this is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, so HEFPEF. Uh, in HEFPEF, right, there's thickening of the walls, and there's a preserved ejection fraction because the fraction of the blood that comes out is still the same, but the, since the walls are so much thicker, there's a smaller quantity of blood inside uh, that can fit inside the ventricle. So there's a huge percentage of people, like something like 83% of patients with HFF are going to have pulmonary mean pulmonary arterial pressures of greater or equal to 35 millimeters of mercury. That's huge. So it's like, you know, every four and five people with HFF are going to have pulmonary arterial hypertension or pulmonary hypertension, sorry. So that's a really big one. And mitral regurge. Mitral regurge is the third one because you know, this is a mitral valve and there's blood that gets, you know, backed up through here because this valve is insufficient and can't prevent the backflow. When this backflow comes up, it causes left atrial dilation, and this kind of dilation propagates all the way up into the pulmonary veins. So third group is the uh, intrinsic lung disease. Uh, so really big things, you know, let's say intrinsic lung, lung disease. So anything that affects the lung, right? Anything that affects the integrity of, of the alveoli. Uh, so let's say you're, you know, you're destroying alveoli uh, in like emphysema or COPD, then uh, you're re essentially reducing the amount of alveoli and you're also reducing the amount of capillaries. So essentially you're taking the same amount of blood and you're trying to transmit it through fewer vessels. If you have the same amount of blood flowing through your body, but you have fewer vessels to transmit it through, then pressures and volumes are going to increase everywhere through those capillaries because they have to, you know, deal with this extra, uh, extra volume. 
so they will develop pulmonary arterial pulmonary hypertension. If you have interstitial lung disease, uh, then a similar process happens. So if you have interstitial lung disease, you know you have poor oxygenation, and uh, in the lungs, you know oxygen is actually a vasodilator. So if you have poor oxygenation and less oxygen to go around, the vessels all constrict, and because of that constriction, uh, you form you know pulmonary hypertension. So big diseases that can cause this are COPD, interstitial lung disease, ILD, uh, and there's also combined uh, pulmonary fibrosis and emphysema. So this is another type of disease that kind of combines those two etiologies. So interstitial, so intrinsic lung disease is a very important cause of pulmonary hypertension. Fourth, thromboembolic disease. So uh, this is clots. Basically, if you're throwing clots into these arteries, you know, if you have into these capillaries, say you have clots that get stuck here, you know, the blood is gonna come in here and it has nowhere to go. So these are gonna, you know, get large. Pressure is gonna increase. And that will cause pulmonary arterial hypertension. So the big, you know, disease that, that we talk about here is something called CTEF, chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. So uh, this is a very important one, and actually this is one of these that is uh, actually you can treat because, you know, if, uh, this is a good thing, not a good thing to have, but this is a problem that you can go ahead and address because you have these clots. Um, if you break up the clots or if you prevent them from, uh, from forming, then you can treat this, this type of pulmonary hypertension. This isn't to say that you can't treat any other one of these, just saying that this one has, you know, notably this has a, a better prognosis than a lot of these other etiologies. And five is everything else. Everything else. So, by everything else, I mean, it's not just like anything can cause this. There are a few key diseases that go into here, and I think of it as there's a few blood ones. So, uh, sickle cell disease is the one that's best studied. Uh, there's also beta thalassemia. Uh, and uh, hereditary spirocytosis. So the theory here is that because of abnormal uh, red cell morphology and the fact that you know these capillaries, you know, you always hear about how oh it's so cool how in the lung uh, all these capillaries are just one cell, you know, one cell thick. It's like they have to really fight to, to push through there. So if you have abnormal cell shape, they can cause problems when they're getting through these, these capillaries and these, these arteries that are small. So they essentially can cause disease of these arteries, which will then in turn lead to hypertension. Uh, and also sarcoidosis. You know how sarcoidosis can cause everything? Well, sarcoidosis can cause pulmonary hypertension. That's, that's very important.